Hello everyone. Welcome or welcome back to my craft space. Today we're going to continue on our mask making journey using our Reader's Digest books. Uh, this is what one of your Reader's Digest junk journals could look like. This is my most recent one. It has three signatures and a bunch of stuff I'm working on still sticking out. I did make a mixed media cover and uh, it has a it's a way to do a hidden spine. I just covered it with some fabric and lace. Um, so let's do a little recap of where we are. If you missed the first video uh, going over this process, I will link it down below and also we'll put it into a playlist for this whole mass making process that I am doing. Um, I had 15 Reader's Digest vintage books and we took the book blocks out of them. So that's this. So it used to be like this. And we cut those book blocks out. I personally save these vintage pages. I do so much with them and they add so much to my journals. Then we went through and cleaned up the spine area and uh, put in some chipboard on some of them, some tape on some of them, and some fabric. And the fabric is built to, or uh, chosen to match the color and the theme of the journal. Even if I don't know what the theme of the journal will be, I just try to pick something that's complementary to the color and style of the journal. This one I didn't put any fabric yet, but I will. Uh, this one has some. And um, you'll notice I, I do have this extra piece of fabric here on most of them, and that is because um, I haven't decided yet how to proceed with the front of our journal and I guess we're gonna decide today. Um, you can either leave this showing with your signature lines in here and your eyelets showing or so if you wanted to do that then you would put your other piece of fabric on now and then uh, we'll make the template and put in the eyelets. If you wanna put the fabric on after like this one and hide the eyelets and hide the signature strings, then you'll save that fabric for later after we put in our signatures. Hopefully that makes sense. And um, we'll go ahead and talk through one right now. I've got 15 to do, so uh, let's get going. Okay, so some things you'll need is you'll need one of your books or the whole stack really because we're gonna I'm doing the mass make so I'm gonna be doing all of them uh, but we're gonna start with just one and then we're gonna make a template and you can make that out of any material that bends. Um, I say that bends because I, I tried using it out of chipboard and this is okay, but it's not my preferred method um, for making my templates. And the reason why is because I really like to have it where it can bend like this because once we do our signatures, we can put this right into the crease of the paper and our holes will be more centered. And this one will fold, but not as easily. Now you can see I have these made out of different types of paper. You can use copy paper, writing paper, notebook paper, whatever. Uh, my preferred paper actually has become graph paper because I'm not really a measurer, um, but it does help me to um, have some things measured. Now you'll notice there's no fabric in this book here that I'm showing you, and that is for the purpose of the video. I think it'll just be a little easier to see what I'm doing right here. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and make our template and we'll get going. So if you are a measuring person, um, the way you wanna make your template is uh, you will measure from where the book folds to where the book folds. So we're simply just making a template literally of just the spine. So I would do this one about one and a half, um, just so that it will still open and close and your template will fit right down in here. The other thing you need to decide is how many signatures you wanna do. Do you wanna have three? Do you wanna have two? Do you want just one? Um, this spine is about one and a half, so I like to do about one inch per signature. If there's one and a half, uh, you can get away with three signatures like I did in this one, um, but it will quickly get filled up fast, depending on how much ephemera you want to put in there. So I wouldn't do more than three. Um, and I think for these ones, I'm just going to go ahead and do two because then I have plenty of room to put lots of ephemera and trims and fabric and whatever else I want to put in there. So um, two will look something sort of like this. 
And this is not the template that I made for this book, so we're gonna make a new one. But this is kind of the idea of what we're doing. You can save these. Uh, you'll notice on this one, I wrote that this is a golden book template. And it's a two inch spine and I have two signatures. So you can save them and use them again if you uh, if they fit. See, this one would fit great. This was uh, for a Reader's Digest for the three signatures. Um, so we're gonna make one now for two and I'll show you how I did that. Especially how I do it um, if I don't measure. But if you do measure, you'd wanna do like the one and a half like we said here and then it is, I think seven and a half. Yeah, so one and a half by seven and a half. I'm gonna write that on here so I don't forget. One and a half by seven and a half. And this is Reader's Digest. And then when I look for this template again, I'll be able to find it. Now I've thought about laminating these templates and just keeping them on a ring or something because I do often use them, uh, reuse them. But again, I really like them to be able to fold just like this so I can put them in the crease of my signature. So that really isn't the best method for that either, at least not for me. Okay, so, and remember, this is just my process. You can do it however is easiest and best for you. If you have another way that's easier for you, feel free to do it that way. So what I like to do is push this paper right down into the creases. Um, like I said, if you're a measure, you would know you would cut it one and a half by seven and a half, and you'll be good to go. Um, I like to just really press it down into the crease here. Make sure it folds up over there. Try not to move it around. <laughs> Make sure it folds up over here without creasing the paper. I just put the edge right into that crease so I don't have to cut that side. And now you can kind of see it made a score line and we're just going to go ahead and cut along that score line. Grab my paper trimmer. I just cleaned up my space some so I'm a little lost for where things are. Isn't that the way it always works? <laughs> Let's see, I think it was right there. All right, let's cut this down first. Not totally sure where my score line was at the bottom, so I'm just gonna double check. Yeah, that's fine. I like to leave a little room um, at the top and the bottom just so that the pages aren't sitting directly on the edge of the cover. So this is gonna fit in here just like this. Could have been just a little bit longer. In fact, I might just redo it real quick and just make it just a little bit longer. Let's see, use this scrap here. Let's see, and if that happens to you, you can easily just add on. Um, and of course, if you are a measure, I can hear you measuring ladies out there saying, if you measure, this would not happen. <laughs> so you are correct, but to each their own way, right? Okay. So I made this just a little bit longer and Go ahead and cut it right at the same spot here. All right, let's see if this is a little better. That's just a little bit too long, so I'm just going to cut a little snippet of that off. I made it a little extra long just in case. Let's see. Yeah, that's about perfect. So you'll notice I have just a little bit of room at the top there and a little bit of room at the bottom. So my pages won't be hanging off. Okay, so now here comes what some people think is the complicated part, but it's really not that bad. Okay, so let's just make sure this, this fits in here and closes and does everything it needs to do. Mm. I think I'm gonna cut just a little bit off here. 
getting your template like just right is really important because it really does affect the rest of your book. So if you, you know, take take a few extra minutes just to be kind of fiddly, um, it really will pay off in the end. Let's see if that was enough. It was really just like a little hair. There we go, that side works. And, oh. I think I still want just a little bit more. I don't know why it's not doing good here. should do it. That was literally just a little slice, but I think it will make all the difference. So this template will decide the spacing of your signatures. Yes, that's perfect. Okay. And um, how your book stays in the book, you know, how your pages stay in the book actually rather. Okay, so I'm going to put this on the edge of my tape right here. And that's important to note because when we put it back in here, we we'll want to make sure that we set it right there when we're using it. And I'm going to mark this piece on the template as the top. And you can put a little arrow or whatever you would like to do. I'm going to also write that it was one and a half by seven and a half. And this is a Reader's Digest. Whoops, if I could spell today, that would be great. Okay. So now what we're going to do. Um, so this is to avoid measuring. You can, we know that this is seven and a half. You could divide it into two or three, depending on how many um, you're doing here. I like to do a three hole pamphlet stitch. I know there's also other variations of it out there. I've seen a five hole. I'm not sure if there's more or less. Um, actually, I do know there's less. Some people do just two holes. And any, any way you'd like to do it is totally fine. Um, I'm going to use eyelets and I'm going to use a big bite, a uh, crocodile big bite to set my eyelets because I'm doing three holes. Um, if you have just a regular crocodile, the smaller version, you'll only be able to do two, one here and one here as it won't have a long enough reach to get to the center. So those are all things to consider as you decide how many holes you're going to punch and um, how you want everything all separated out. So we're going to do two signatures with a three hole pamphlet stitch. So we'll have one, two, three holes and two holes going this way, if that makes sense. So the first thing we need to do is figure out the center of our paper. So we're going to our template, our paper template. We're going to fold it in half this way and crease it really well. And that would be the center right there. I like to crease it again, just so I can see it really well. Then we're gonna find thirds. So we're just gonna fold the bottom to the center and again, crease it really well. So you get that nice crisp line. You can use a bone folder if you'd like. I always just use my fingers, but uh, whatever way works best for you. And then we're gonna do the same thing on this other side here. So now you can see we've got our paper divided evenly with three crease lines here. One, two, three. So now we're gonna do um, this way here in half. And you can do this on the table if that works best for you. Just put it on the table and crease it along. Fold it back just to make sure we get that nice crisp crease line. You can see everything. Okay, so that tells us where the center is, but we want to have two columns. So we want one over here and one over here. So you guessed it, we're just going to fold to that crease line. Try to make everything straight here. I don't know what's going on. There we go. And then this one, we're gonna fold to the crease line as well. And then we'll fold these back so we can see our lines really well. And that is it. 
So that gives us our markings now. Uh, we're going to basically connect the dots on these lines and we'll know exactly where we need to punch. So, and actually if you were doing three signatures because we have this line in the center, you could just put the dots there too. So basically we want to put a dot where these lines cross connect. So we had this one here and you can see this is our crease that we made and that's our other crease that we made. So it connects right there. And then it connects right here. And right here. Here and here. Okay, so you can see we've got six holes, or what will be holes, six dots. So you can just set it on your book here on your spine and see if the holes are going to land exactly where you'd like them. Now what I mean by that is um, some people, if you want to keep the spine visible on the outside, you might want your lines to, or your holes to line up in between these lines. And if that's the case, you would want to make sure what it looks like here on the outside and move your lines accordingly. See, this, this one here is gonna be up here. So, um, you know, you could, you would have to rearrange them if that was what you wanted to do. I'm not going to do that. I'm gonna cover mine with fabric, so um, it's not gonna be a problem. So what I like to do now is use my crocodile. You can use an awl if you are not going to put any eyelets in. An awl will work just fine to poke the holes. An awl looks something like this. It's basically um, like a, a pokey screwdriver. <laughs> um, it's, yeah, so you just, you know, you would poke like this, poke right through. Um, that's a little bit difficult on my hands, so I try not to do it that way too much. Um, I like to show you guys that you don't have to have all the fancy tools to do uh, this process, but when I'm mask making, the Crocodile Big Bite is actually the best tool for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this. I'm gonna use the 3 16 punch size. So it's gonna be a little bigger one. Um, that's the other thing you'll wanna consider too is um, when you are using your eyelets or deciding which eyelets to use, if you use the smaller ones, those are an eighth inch, uh, you need to make sure that whatever you're planning to stitch your signatures with for the pamphlet stitch that your needle's going to fit including the eye and that your thread is going to fit uh, including the width of the thread so just some things to consider i most often use the 316 size because it just gives me a little more room so i'm going to go ahead and punch these holes and they are it is a pretty big hole punch <laughs> But the eyelet does take up some of the space as well. And I like to use a pretty big eyed needle because I use like a tapestry needle because I have a harder time threading needles and seeing. So, um, but it also gives me plenty of room to know that whatever thread or yarn I would like to use to bind my books is going to fit. And to make sure that you are lining these up appropriately, there is this little, this little doodad in here. So when you punch your hole, you could push this right to the edge of your paper and you'll know that as long as you push your paper to that edge, it's gonna be the same every time where you push it. This paper is a little thin for this though, so. I mostly rely on the dots that I've made and the cross sections of the paper if I'm using graph paper, which is really nice. All right, so there is our template. And then we're gonna go ahead and I'll be poking the holes and then putting in eyelets. Um, I think I'm just gonna go through and poke all the holes first because that seems to be um, the most time-saving thing to do and then I will put the eyelets in all in one round too. So let's do one together and then we'll put it on fast forward 
and we'll do all of them. So you wanna make sure you know what the top is. So this uh, does have print on it. Doesn't necessarily matter per se, but um, because it's gonna be covered. Um, but, and so I'm going to line my top line up here with this book page here. And then um, it's nice to kind of clip them in place. Make sure again that don't assume that your template is right every time. Just make sure that everything, when you put your template in there, it's going to fold nicely. Um, and that it's still where you want those holes for each book. So like I said before, just because we're mass making doesn't mean that we want to uh, take out the quality of our book. We want to still make sure we have a nice, nicely made quality book. Okay. So make sure it's nice and straight. Make sure, oh, make sure it's not doing that. What do we got going on here? Maybe I have it a little bit crooked. What's going on? There we go, that's better. All right, and then since we have the big bite, we can just go right in on the side over here and punch our holes. Now, if you don't have a big bite and you don't wanna do eyelets, you could simply use the awl and poke it through your holes right here. And then I'm just gonna flip it around and we'll do the other side. Another way to do this too, if you didn't have fabric, or even if you do, I guess you could use a marker that would show it nice um, and clear. You could just put your template on here and put three dots for your mark, like with a Sharpie, and then punch that out. Then you wouldn't have to use the template. You could just punch your holes right through. So let's just make sure our holes are good. Sometimes with fabric, you'll have these little extra doodads to pull out of the holes there. And that is good. So this one is ready for two signatures. Um, but I do like to put eyelets in mine. I feel like the eyelets just help to reinforce the holes a little better. All right, so since we're doing the mass make, I'm gonna go ahead and put this on fast forward and you'll watch me do the next, uh, like 13 of them, I think. <laughs> so here we go.
Okay, so all of that in real time took me about 20 minutes. So when you're doing things in mass uh, make sessions or mass quantities, doing the same thing over and over and over again keeps the process going faster. So now we're gonna go ahead and do eyelets. I have all of these eggshell colored eyelets. These are 3 16 eyelets. I'm going to be setting them with the Big Bite. So the, the tool I just used to set the hole or to punch the holes, I'm going to be setting the eyelets with. Um, if you've never used one of those before, they are awesome. If you are using your awl to make all of these holes, you will simply just use uh, like a notebook or phone book or magazine or something underneath to catch the holes and you'll use your awl and stamp, you know, punch, press the holes through um, in all of the spots on your template. If you have the smaller crocodile, you could do the top and the bottom and just do a two hole pamphlet stitch. Uh, even if you're not mass making, this is still a good way to do, uh, a, still a good process if you just want to do one or if you want to do two um, or however many you're doing. Um, okay, so now we're going to go ahead and change our crocodile to the eyelet setting here. And it has a little eyelet right on the top there. Hopefully you can see it. And then we're going to change our settings down here for the bigger eyelets as well. And the setting that I think I use is a C3. I have a really hard time seeing these. I just kind of know what they look like. I use A1 or C3, depending on the eyelet. And this bigger one, I think, is C3. And they are labeled on here with little letters and numbers. Okay, so what we're gonna be doing is um, I have a whole ton of these uh, eggshell colored eyelets. And if you are in need of some, feel free to contact me. I will be letting some go on my D-Stash sale on my Facebook page. So you can put all of them in and then go set them, or you can do them one at a time. It doesn't really matter. You can do one column at a time. I like to do the column because then I can um, press and then move to the next one and press and move to the next one and press and then I like to look at the back and make sure they are all set and these are not so I need to be able to press harder I think there and I'm using my glass mat I'm always scared of using this glass mat when I'm doing um, like heavy duty stuff on here, but Tim Holtz says it is super, super sturdy. So we will take his word for it. Did I get it? I did. So usually if you are having any difficulty setting your eyelets, a lot of times it is because of the setting that you have on your crocodile. So just double check that you've got your settings right for the, for the size of eyelets that you're using. And then you need to make sure you are pressing um, with the right amount of pressure. Sometimes I've seen it too much and sometimes I've seen it not enough. For me, it's usually not enough. Um, but sometimes, it is too much. All right, so we'll go ahead and put in our other row and do the same thing again. All right, so those are all good. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on fast forward and we'll get the rest of these eyelets done. 
I forgot to mention also, if you want to have your string showing on your spine, you may want to put the eyelets in on this side, just so that you have the clean side of your eyelet uh, over here and um, all will be good there. If you are um, you know, gonna cover this fine, it doesn't really matter, you can do it either way. So you'll see me do some on the inside, some on the outside, doesn't really matter. Um, if you don't know what you wanna do as far as covering your spine, you might just wanna put the clean side on the outside. The clean side is the colored side. The reason I call the other side not the clean side is because that's the side that's smashed or set. So there we go. All right, let's get these done. Okay, so that last one I couldn't do because I don't have the fabric on. But um, now is the next step where you might want to consider what type of closure you're going to do. Um, I feel like I always forget about a closure until I am at the end of doing the cover and realize that I didn't save room for it like this one. Um, I had planned to put an eyelet right here and over here, um, but then I realized it wouldn't have worked anyways because I have this piece hanging out here. Um, you can do a closure so many different ways. You could put in a ribbon right here and just run it all the way across and then like glue it in. Um, or, you know, you could have eyelets here and here on your end pieces, uh, like this, let's see. So you could have, let's zoom out just a little bit. You could have an eyelet here and an eyelet over here and then put your ribbon through and then your ribbon across and put your ribbon through the eyelet holes, if that makes sense. Um, you could simply use ribbon just at the eyelet holes and not in the center. Uh, you can use metal, like chain, as a closure with a clasp. Um, I've done that on a couple of journals. And um, you can use a hairband that simply goes across here so you don't have to punch any holes. Uh, you can use lace, you can use rickrack, so many different things you can use. But if you're going to do it now, now is a good time. Um, one other thing I'd like to say about doing this mass make, my hand is so sore from punching all of those eyelet holes. Um, so. I think if I were to do this process again, I would punch the holes, set the eyelets, punch the holes, set the eyelets. Um, it will slow it down just a little bit, but I think my hand would be much more appreciative of that part of it. So um, I hope you're enjoying this series of how to mass make these journals. If you are, please give me a big thumbs up, comment, and let me know if you're making any of these. 
or if you plan to make some or what you are mass making. And in the next step, we'll be talking about our signatures and how I'm going to put mine together for all of these books. If you are not ready to do signatures and you are simply preparing your covers here just to have on the shelf, you are done and good to go. Um, you can watch the next video just to see how I do put my signatures together. And uh, like I said, any of these steps can be done for however many books you're doing, whether it's one or 50 um, or 15 like me. So um, again, if you've liked this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Make sure that you're subscribed and you hit that notification bell so you can hear when I have all of my videos posted. And uh, thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.